Good morning, Prague photo people. Um, yesterday, I went ahead and held the uh, packing meeting and um, it looked like a lot of people couldn't show up, which was totally fine. So I worked on a video and then I realized like this was not gonna work. So I went ahead and revamped it. I've got a presentation for you this morning. I know not all of you are going to need this, um, but I do know that a lot of you have questions about um, lodging and about weather and just you know the more more information you have the better right now so I did speak with Yana yesterday as well as Anne and we got some questions answered and there's a few things that um, she's working on right now that are really exciting um, and then there's some questions that have been answered along the way so a couple things that I want to get out of the way First off, just for those of you who don't need the packing information, although I did put a lot of work into it, so I'd love it if you could hang around. Um, couple things. One is uh, what Yana has done is she has arranged for two flats. So two apartments. Um, one is going to be with uh, five people and the other one is going to be with six people. One of the flats has a room that is big enough uh, to have three beds in it. The bedrooms are relatively small. The, each flat has its own laundry, kitchen, dining room, uh, living room area for hanging out and bathroom. So for those of you who are curious about how the roommate situation is gonna go and how the housing situation is gonna go, um, what I would like from you and what Ann and Yana would like is the sooner you have a particular um, request for somebody, you might want to go ahead and reach out to that person. I know that we haven't had a ton of meetings yet and we haven't all met each other. Um, I think if you have a particular preference for who you might be bunking with or some, um, you know, I don't know, like, it's kind of weird with housing, right? Because you, like I mentioned the other day, like I don't wanna sleep in the same room with someone who snores really loud. I can't sleep. It's really hard for me to sleep. Some people that doesn't bother, some people don't snore. There's gonna be some shuffling around, I'm sure at some point, but the, the goal is to really get all of this stuff out of the way now so that everybody has a good idea of um, who they're bunking with. So if you have a preference, if you have a particular person the rule is, is that they have to actually request you as well. So you might want to reach out to them or you might just put a call out to say, hey, I'm super easy. If anybody snores, I can't hear a thing. No big deal. Reach out to me. You all have each other's emails. So that's the one that's one thing that we didn't know last time that we know now. So there's going to be two apartment flats. They're going to be in the same building. Um, those flats do not have air conditioning. They do have, uh, they will have fans, but as far as AC, Prague is slowly catching up. I don't think any of the housing there was a few exceptions in general has air conditioning. It's a little bit like Portland in that way. Um, that said, the first two weeks of July are typically the coolest weeks of the summer. Um, the temperatures in the day are going to be anywhere between 60 and 90 degrees. Um, the evenings, with very, very few exceptions, will always cool down to about the 60s. So we do need to be prepared for some um, chilly weather, depending on you know what your definition of chilly is. And we also need to be pre prepared for thunderstorms and some rain. So that does affect our packing a little bit. Um, but I hope that for those of you who are kind of new to packing for abroad or new to packing just for multiple reasons, of um, multiple reasons, multiple uses of items, uh, this actually might help you out. What was the other thing? The other thing was, um, I think I'll get to that in the lecture. If I've missed anything, um, you could also just look through the transcript. All right, so let's get going. I made a very pretty, if I do say so myself, slideshow for us. Okay, 
So looks like everybody can see my, my screen. All right, so this idea is for us to just talk about packing for Prague in the context of the information that we know right now. A lot of the things that are unknown still are um, everybody needs to get their itineraries over to uh, Anne because Anne needs to see when folks are arriving and hopefully folks will be arriving in kind of a clump of time so that Yana and Ifsa can coordinate to come over and pick everybody up. The housing that we're in um, does not have a like a front desk or a check-in area. So you will need to coordinate um, with Yana and well, primarily with Anne so that um, you can get either picked up or you could take an Uber or you could use transit, which the train is actually really easy in public transit in Prague is really awesome. So um, if you're arriving like I am way outside of that time frame, you might want to go ahead and just give your itinerary to Anne sooner than later. And then that way she can help you um, make sure that you make your connections. So for those of you who are traveling abroad for the very first time, especially some of our members of the group that are maybe a little bit less experienced travelers, um, you know, definitely let Anne know. And if there's any questions at all, I think I mentioned before, I was going to be there a day early. So if something, you know, feels sketchy or you're not feeling comfortable, you know, you're going to have my number and you'll have Yana's and we'll make sure that you get there okay. Um, and this is something that Yana does full time all the time. All right. So here we go. So I hope that you had a chance to just watch this cute little video. Um, it's only like a few seconds. The whole episode is actually a lot longer, but it's got some really good takeaways. So the main tip is that you do not need as much as you think you do. I am horrible at packing when I travel. When I backpack, it's easy for me. I don't care if I smell a little bit. I'm going to wear the same thing all the time. Everything's going to get dirty. I don't have to be presentable, right? Um, it is easier in the sense that I take all those pressures off of myself to, to be clean and feel like, I don't know, I'm just not out there to look nice, right? So I, I kind of don't care. Um, when we're traveling though, and we're in situations where we don't really know what kind of events we're gonna be attending, um, you know, we know for this particular trip that there's kind of a, a range of things that we'll probably do. For some of you who are going on to other trips, you're gonna have other reasons why you might bring more things um, than someone who's just gonna be right at Prague and then go home right afterwards, right? That's gonna be easier to pack for just a one, one leg trip. Um, for myself, you know, I'll be going on a couple other side trips, um, but that's not gonna change things too much. I tend to bring too many things though, and I will end up wearing the same thing the whole time. The fact that we have laundry is gonna be really helpful. And that'll mean that maybe you only need to bring two shirts um, at like least, and then, Anything else you find you need, actually there's at least four used um, uh, and secondhand shops right in the neighborhood where we're gonna stay. So Yana was like, just do that. Like if you need something right away, if you feel like you need a, a sweater or a jacket or something to dress up because you ended up wanting to go th to the theater, that might be a great way to do it. Um, but overall, we don't need as much as we think we might. So one of the other tips that I thought was really helpful was plan it out. We're gonna be in Prague from the 5th of July or the 6th of July, I can't remember which. Um, sorry, my own itinerary is getting mixed up through the 28th of July. So that's when we're gonna be leaving. Um, that's a lot of time, but again, laundry, laundry. So um, the same thing could be washed over and over. You are gonna be sharing the laundry with a number of other folks. So that could take some coordination, but that's nothing that more than you probably already have to do at home, especially if you're living in a house with multiple people. Um, so we have, again, at least four secondhand shops nearby where we could add or replenish our supply. We have access to flats with laundry available for us to wash and wear our clothes. Prague is not a remote town. We are not in the back country. Prague is a metropolitan city with a tremendous amount of history in textiles and fashion and design. So 
I don't think we're going to be in a situation where we can't find anything. That said, if you're on a budget, again, secondhand stores, awesome choice. And, you know, I'm sure that once we get to Prague, if there's something that you just need to borrow in order to go to the theater, um, because all of a sudden you decide you want to, that's going to be okay. You'll probably find somebody willing to share. Um, I wouldn't depend on that, but, you know, in a pinch. Um, again, we don't have AC in our lodging. So do think about like what you enjoy sleeping in and how that's going to inform what you pack or what you're going to need to bring or not bring, perhaps. That fuzzy robe that you really love, you're probably not going to need it. Just saying. Um, the evenings are still cool. So think about something light that you could put on over what you're already wearing. So if that's a wrap or a scarf or a sweater or a jacket, make sure that it's lightweight. Um, I'm thinking like jean jackets or even, um, you know, like a, a little lightweight bomber or a linen blazer or something that can kind of double as a bunch of other things. That's going to be preferable to bringing like a really big fluffy hoodie. Um, again, you know, it's kind of weighing what's your comfort level, what's going to make you feel good and um, what's going to be easy to carry and take with you because you might need to schlep it from morning to night at some point, right? Our itinerary and activities, there's a few things that are still in flux. So I don't wanna, you know, I'm, not, I'm never gonna guarantee that our itinerary is gonna be exactly what we say it is because as those of you who travel know, things change, uh, the group changes. We may want to do something different than what we thought we did, right? So there is flexibility built in, but essentially this is pretty much what's gonna happen. Every day that we have class, we're probably gonna start in the morning with a coffee and class check-in. That's gonna look like a bunch of different things. Um, it could be a critique, it could be just a casual check-in and make sure that everybody's on the same page for the day. Um, Monday through Friday, we have class activities scheduled throughout the day. None of the class activities with the exception of traveling together None of those really take up the whole day. There's meals that we do on our own. There's time that we can spend alone. There's going to be time for you built in to get out and exercise or relax or hang or read or do whatever it is that you want to do. The weekends are for you to explore and to rest. So whatever and whichever of those you need in what quantity is up to you to decide. Yana knows that um, there's a big interest in, I'm going to say this correctly. I got to look it up though. Uh, there's interest in the, oh geez. I wrote a lot of notes yesterday, didn't I? The Kosnice i ve Sedici in Kunta Hora. So what that is, is the bone church. And the Bone Church is outside of town, but it's a pretty easy train ride out there. So that's unscheduled. Folks can go or not go. Yana is going to give us a list of recommendations. The other thing um, that we don't have time or didn't really want to put on the budget um, to add to the, the cost was glass blowing. Czech uh, folks have like a really long, illustrious, illustrious history of glass blowing and glass making. Um, so Yana's going to take a look and see if she can give us some some good ideas when we're in um, uh, Chesky Viv. Oh no, I think it's Carlo Vivari. I think it's Carlo Vivari. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, glass blowing might be on one of the trips too, or you could just stay home and relax, um, go visit friends. I know a couple of you have friends in town. Um, so what it is, whatever it is that you want to do, you'll have free time to do that. Activities that we're going to be doing, which should inform what you pack. Walking, lots and lots and lots of walking on cobblestone streets. So those rolly bags are not going to like that. Um, make sure that you're comfortable carrying your bag. Make sure that it's lightweight enough that you can carry it yourself. Try to be as minimal as possible so that you can use public transit to get from the airplane to your lodging and back if you need that. Um, 
hiking, your shoes will get wet and muddy if it rains. And obviously we can't guarantee the weather. weather. So make sure that you have a pair of shoes that you can walk in that is okay to get muddy. They will get dirty uh, and they will get worn. Um, we are gonna be outside for a lot of our experiences. So thinking about having a set of active clothing that's okay to get wet and dry overnight and maybe even some backups. As well as we are gonna be visiting libraries, galleries, churches, and wineries, places that in general, the Czechs as well as most Europeans dress up more than Americans. And come on Portlanders, we're really casual here, right? So for those of you who've moved from the Bay Area or the East Coast, we're really casual here. I mean, when I moved here from San Diego, I was kind of used to the casualness of, of that kind of level. Um, but when I lived in the Bay Area, like I dress very differently now than I used to. So think about um, the flexibility of dressing nicer um, and whatever that means to you and just thinking about being comfortable. So it's that balance that you're trying to, to have. And then again, if you find yourself in a situation where you're like, oh, I really underestimated this, then you could borrow, you could improvise, you could also go to the thrift store. So there's lots of options. Don't stress it. No one's gonna leave you hanging. We'll figure it out. All right. Pare down to pack light, right? You never need as much stuff as you think. Try to eliminate one third of what you think you need before you go. Oh, that's tough. Reduce the weight of your luggage. Think about things that are lightweight and multi-use, right? So um, a scarf is a great example. Um, I usually like to have a bandana. Uh, you might need it for a compress. You might need it for a wrap. You might need it to blow your nose. You might need it because you had to pee in the bushes. You might need the bandana because the sun's on your neck and you don't wanna get a sunburn. So there's lots of reasons why you might need that. Use packing cubes. Now, I have never made the jump from using packing cubes or compression sacks in my um, backpacking to my overnight packing, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna go on a small trip this weekend and I'm gonna see how it works because I love compression sacks. It keeps everything clean. It keeps your dirty stuff away from your clean stuff and you can smush everything down and get more in there. Now, remember, you want things to be light. So don't just take advantage of squishing everything down and making your, your bag uh, just a lump of weight. Um, just because you can lift it, go ahead and try to carry it from one side of the street to the next, right? Like that's gonna be you, lift it up, carry it upstairs, see if that actually feels okay. And if you're huffing and puffing just after like one flight of stairs, it's too heavy. Lose the liquid toiletries. Oh, this one's gonna be a little hard for me because I, maybe I'll just get my hair cut really, really short. Maybe that's what I'll do. Um, pick up what you need along the way. If there's something that's like your product, I feel you. Um, I also just do want to say that Jonathan Van Ness from Queer Eye has a really great hint that um, they've been giving everybody, and that is to have a spray bottle, which I'm sure you could find, like New Season sells them, Freddie sells them. Have a spray bottle, fill it up with a little bit of conditioner, put some water in there, shake it up, and then you've got kind of like a refresher, especially if you have curly-ish hair like mine that might be something that you could work with. If you've just got a product that you can't live without, see if you can put it in one of those like goo tubes um, and bring it that way. Everything else though, like you can pretty much buy um, wherever we're traveling. So, you know, again, we're not going into, you know, the middle of nowhere. This is the Czech Republic. There's going to be deodorant and shampoo. So um, again, if you have something that's special to your, body lotion, hair, product kind of thing that you cannot live without, maybe just don't take the whole bottle, you know, see if you can pare that down. Um, some of the other things though that you might need to actually think about is sunscreen, bug spray if you need it, um, tampons, if you have a cup or menstrual pads or, um, you know, period panties, that kind of thing. If you've got, um, 
the two things that I think are really important to think about. Uh, and one of them is toiletries for going to the bathroom. So if you, um, if you have wipes that you use already, there are actually these really great Preparation H wipes that come in a yellow bag. Um, you could pack that into your bag. I don't know if they have them in the Czech Republic. I, you could look it up. But basically they're like witch hazel wipes. Um, they're not flushable but they are something that you can like take out some of them, put them in a little plastic bag and keep with you. They're fabulous if there's no toilet paper. And if you've been like wet and sweaty and dirty, it's just a nice way to just kind of clean yourself up a little bit and make sure that you're not getting any chafing. Um, and that, you know, for a lot of the walking that we're doing that can put extra pressure. And so these are really like anti-hemorrhoid wipes. I use these backpacking all the time. They are a lifesaver. So, um, you know, in situations where maybe you don't have time to go shower or time or the resources to like go, you know, go just free it, you know, um, whether it's number one or number two, just to be clean. It's just kind of a nice special thing that you can do for yourself. Be kind to your bum. Um, the other thing is, uh, I don't have an example here with me, but the other thing to bring, and I think we'll talk about this when we talk about shoes, is chafing. If you have jeans or pants that kind of sit low on your legs, you might chafe with all of the walking we're doing. So you might wanna bring something like, if you go to foot traffic or one of the running stores to just kind of see what shoes might be good for you if you're gonna buy new shoes, um, you have things like, uh, uh, butt butter or you have body butters or you have glides and you have all these other kind of petroleum products that you could use or uh, cocoa products that you can use that help lower the friction and make it so that you don't get like a heat rash or um, a friction rash that can be like really really painful. Um, I know when I run sometimes with a tank top, I'll get it underneath my arms and you take a, you don't know you have it. And then you take a shower and you're like, oh my God, this hurts so bad. So anti-chafing and stuff would be great. One of the best products out there, I think is Dr. Bronner's diaper rash cream. It's clear. If you get anything with zinc, it's going to stain and you don't want that. And it's going to be really visible. And you also don't want that. Um, the Dr. Bronner's stuff is awesome. We could probably find diaper rash cream or diaper rash stuff in Prague, but it comes in a little tin, it's really easy. And what I do before a run, that's gonna be like an hour or two or three hours long, I will just slather my feet with it and I get no blisters. So that's another kind of hint that I think is nice. All right, as far as your clothing, suggestions, rain jacket with a hood. Rain jacket doubles as an out layer it doubles as a windbreaker. It doubles as an insulator. It keeps all the heat in. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy. It should be waterproof, however. And as we know in Portland, waterproof is very different than water resistant. Um, please don't spend a lot of money on this though. This is not gonna be your lifesaver. It will keep your clothes dry. That's important only if you wear it and only if you bring it. So only bring one if you're actually gonna wear it. Um, the hood is important just to keep your face dry. It's also important to be able to like keep something dry because you might want your camera inside at some point, right? I don't think there's gonna be like a huge deluge, but what do I know? I've never been to Prague. Um, make sure it's packable, make sure it's breathable. Those are two really nice things to have. You don't wanna be all like sweaty. The other thing is that um, if you're using, if you're buying a used one, so you go to Next Adventure's basement um, and you, can't find one upstairs, but you find one downstairs. If you get something older than a couple of years old, you might need to have the waterproofing redone. And so there's a wash that you can get. Just ask anybody at like REI or Next Adventure uh, or whatever sports place and see if they, they have a recommendation. There's one where you put in the washer and it kind of reseals the fabric for you. So that's a way to get some really good life out of your stuff. Advice from Yana, bring shoes that let you run over cobblestones to catch the train. We will be running, we will be walking. A lot of it's on cobblestones. There is no cushion. Pumps and heels and those kinds of things, clogs, do not work, please do not bring them. They will make 
like you turn your ankle and then you'll be super bummed out because you'll be on crutches for the rest of our trip um, and hurting. So please make sure to take care of your feet. Get something that has good tread or traction for the hiking. Um, bring some shoes that are tried and tested already. If you do not have shoes and you're going to buy them, get them now. Con consult someone at Foot Traffic. And I'm just thinking of Foot Traffic. It's any like running store. Places that are specifically for runners are, and walkers are going to be places that know what they're talking about for the most part. Foot Traffic, I know that they're actually trained um, to support runners and walkers for ultra running for long distance stuff. I don't know about everybody else. Um, I know Next Adventure is really nice to work with. They're great for climbing gear. I don't know, I can't really vouch for what they know about running and hiking. Um, but shop around, see what you can find. Um, Multi-use. If you like your shoes and they're comfortable and you can hike and run in them, awesome. I love trail runners because I can do all those things and they're super comfy. You can also get an insert like super feet and put those in there too. Um, maybe bring an extra pair if you think that your shoes are kind of on their last legs. If you have an old pair of shoes that you want to bring because you love them, put in some insoles now and then see if that actually helps because insoles will extend the life quite a while and then you can use your favorite shoes. As far as socks, Again, use what works for you. I have found that the sock, not the shoe, gives you the blisters. So, um, you know, wool and other non-cotton socks will last longer and they will dry faster overnight. Cotton is not going to be your friend if we get wet. So just a reminder, I really, really discourage you from bringing 100% cotton, really anything other than like your sleeping stuff. You know, anything that you want to use and sweat in, please do not use cotton. Um, the other thing is indoor slip-ons or flip-flops. So checks always take off their shoes when entering the house. And unless you want to go barefoot, which is acceptable um, when you're in your own home, uh, please bring a pair of slippers or flip-flops or slides or something that you can wear inside. Since we are in a shared space, my recommendation, strong recommendation, is that you go ahead and bring a pair of slides or sandals or something so that your feet are not just bare in this space that you're sharing with five other people, okay? Active clothing. The key here is quick dry and layering. So you could bring one item of each thing. Um, if you want more advice, ask me. If you need specific advice for hiking and running and you're just starting from scratch, please just email me. I'm happy to help you with that. Um, as far as basics, you know, you want layering, right? Uh, you also, I didn't put in here like a, a vest, but that's always nice if you run a little cold. A long sleeve, a short sleeve, a tank top, uh, or a second short sleeve, shorts, pants, hats, basics. You could wear them all at the same time underneath your rain jacket, or you could wear them, you know, not one at a time because you don't really want to like forget your shorts, but you know what I mean. All right, fiber, merino, lightweight. If you can find it, get it used. That actually lasts a long time. Get them used. It's okay if they're ugly. Nobody cares. <coughs> Nylon or tech fabric is really great. Cotton poly blend is least preferable, but you could, you could do it. You could get away with it. Clothing items. Um, I already mentioned that. Other items, a sun hat, Anything with like a brim that protects your face is great. A beanie is great for warmth, neck garter or a bandana. Um, anything to keep your hair out of your face. If you've got bangs like me and you don't like your bangs in your face. Um, anything to shade your face and protect yourself from the sun. You can also go crazy and get like arm sleeves and gloves. But again, we don't really need all that stuff. Uh, UV protection, sports part the usually part of sports fabric options. You might want to think about that. Uh, sports fabric or wool blend dries fast, layers, you can adjust to weather, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Look at that. Easy to find secondhand. All right, dressy clothing. So again, 
we are going to be in some situations where you might want to dress up. I don't know. I don't know all of you yet, and I don't know what's available. That's probably a good argument to bring at least something that can convert your daily wear to the evening wear, whatever that looks like for you. So if that's like a nice button up shirt, great. If that is, uh, you know, a shawl, awesome. If that's just a jaunty chapeau, uh, that's fine. Although I would imagine you'd have to take that off once you get inside. Um, you just really need to think about like a base outfit that maybe could be used in other ways, you know, during the day. Um, fibers, again, climate appropriate and low maintenance. There's a lot of sports fibers out there that, you know, look nice and fancy, but they're actually like wrinkle free. Um, clothing items. If you're going to go to mass, if you're going to attend the theater or the opera or the Philharmonic um, or orchestra or whatever it's, I think it's the Philharmonic, but I don't know. Anyway, if you're going to attend an event that normally would be quite fancy, you're going to want your clothing to go below the knees. So whether it's pants or skirts, just make sure that um, you're wearing something that's suitable for a formal um, event. Other items, you know, shoes, that would be my problem. Like, can I have shoes with me that double for this and that? I don't know, I, that would take a lot of work, depends on the shoes that you're bringing and wearing. Um, Multi-use multi is preferable. And again, couldn't this be something that you just pick up and use as a souvenir? Daily wear, basics. You're probably gonna end up like me and have a, a uniform that you wear all the time. Your favorite pair of pants, your favorite like long sleeve that you put over your short sleeves and you change your base layers. I can tell you a rule that I usually follow is that the things that are further away from my body, I will wear over and over again because they don't get as dirty or smelly, right? I'm usually traveling when, where I don't have laundry facilities. The things that you know touch my body directly, like underwear, um, tank tops, I usually will change those out daily. Again, depending on how remote things are and how accessible laundry is. So you might think about it that way too. Do you really need three long sleeve shirts, you know, for daily wear? Maybe you just have one like lightweight kind of thing and a button up and you're good. If something gets stained, if something gets ruined, um, you know, think about that too. Like I tend to be a little sloppy and don't care about getting dirty. I'm not gonna bring a white linen top with me. That is not gonna last, right? But I might, I'm definitely gonna bring a linen top, but maybe just not a light colored one, just in case something gets on it and I don't wanna stress about that. So again, balance it out with what's suitable and what works for you. Comfort wear. Now, I normally wouldn't get into this because what people sleep in is so unique to each of us and, and it's kind of like a personal thing, but because we're gonna be in Prague in the summer, we're going to be living in a situation with other people. So it won't be exactly like a dorm. It'll be more like friends, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out, right? <laughs> Hopefully it'll be more like friends and less like big brother. Um, so we're gonna be in a situation though where we're gonna have to be out and about in front of each other, um, you know, with, going from the bedroom to the bathroom and back, right? So it's a little bit like being in a dorm, but not really in the sense that you have your privacy once you get into the bathroom and then you only have your other roommate when you have your room. So I guess it's it's kind of like being in a dorm with like really nice bathroom options. Um, so think about what you're comfortable being around other people in. I would advise if you do bring a robe or an, uh, something that you put on when you're going from one place to another, that you think about the lightweight and the multi-use, you know, um, think about maybe like if it's a, uh, a wrap or robe, is that something that you could also wear as like a fancy thing? Um, that's a stretch, I don't know. <laughs> but, but also thinking about like, maybe just having one outfit that you sleep in that's good for a really hot weather. Um, and then having a backup that, you could just throw on something that makes it look more suitable, you know, a pair of loose pants, um, a t-shirt, 
that you're sleeping in and then you put a long sleeve over it and voila, it looks like you're you know halfway decent for the day and you can go out and get coffee. So just think about that. Oh, look at this. Oh yeah, so hanging out. Europeans do not go out in jammies and sweats to go get coffee. Dress according to the culture who is hosting you, please. Please be respectful. You really don't wanna get nailed for like a disrespectful American tourist. Please don't be that person. <laughs> I don't want us to be that group. Um, so do be respectful and think about, you know, just look around, be observant. If if the environment is such that you see other people wearing and dressing the way that, you know, feels comfortable for you, go ahead and fit in with everybody else. That's fine. Um, definitely, you know, when we're, when it's more about like individual style, you do you. Absolutely. But just think about like dressing for the occasions and making sure that you're not dressed inappropriately in a way that's going to prevent you from having a good time, fully participating and being, you know, respectful while still being authentic to yourself. I know that's like a lot to ask, but I think we all have a lot of practice doing this already. Like you wouldn't go to work dressed the way that you go to bed. Right. So just those kinds of things. All right. So hopefully this was helpful. There will be more information coming soon. And I appreciate you sticking with me until the very end slide. Thanks.